Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, guys. Welcome back to another video. Today, I just kind of want to go over a few little things that I've learned uh, since uh, I've been playing Foundry these last couple of days. Uh, and some of them are kind of common, and some of, some of them you might not even know existed. So, um, welcome to my little world, if you've not already seen the uh, playthrough. We have released episode one over on the main channel. Uh, and right now, I've currently, I'm currently working on episode four. So if you want to kind of see the behind the scenes, we even started working on a mine shaft with explosives, by the way. Uh, but if you want to uh, catch up on like what I'm doing and all that kind of stuff, make sure to check out the VOD channel. The VOD channel is basically a place where all my uh, broadcasts, my live stream, get put into 30 minute episodes. So it's a lot easier for you to watch and kind of know what you're up to. Uh, and it's even got everything up to what's not even released yet. So if you're interested in seeing that, check out the VOD channel. But let's get straight to the point. And the first tip is, is if you actually go over to the little uh, drop pod here, you can actually go inside of this and customize your little droid. So you can kind of change what color you want him to be. You can kind of, you know, if you've got the, the deluxe edition, if you was a backer of the game, you also must get given this. So make sure you check your HIO profile. You would have received an email. Uh, if not, you won't get this unless you get the Founders Edition of the game. Uh, I'm, uh, I was a backer of the game, hence why I've got the little top hat. Uh, and you can kind of change the color and of your little thing. It's kind of cool if you want to play multiplayer uh, and all that kind of cool stuff. Because uh, obviously, uh, when you're playing single player, you can't really see your character. You can see your, your drill and everything, uh, but that's about it. So tip number two is the map. If we actually pull up the map right here, we can see these little squares right here. And each of these squares is 32 by 32 blocks. So if I put a block from here and go 32 in length, uh, which is about there, and we look on the map, we can see that from there to there is 32 uh, blocks wide, and it's 32 blocks wide in height. So just in case you want to kind of measure how many foundations you might need, because obviously 32 by 32 is what you'll work out to fill out one of these areas with foundations just something you might want to know maybe the next thing is is when you actually go to the map as well you can actually right click and create waypoints uh, and with the whole beginning drop pod you can actually right click on it obviously i've deleted it now but you can right click on it and it will say remove waypoint right here as well and you can come down here and you can kind of toggle your waypoints that you can see via this little uh, toggle waypoints list uh, and you can do from current position, if, if you want to create a new one, or from a certain coordinate. So if you've got a friend that goes, oh, I'm over here, can you blah, 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 blah. They can either create one or you can write one yourself as well. And then also in the top right hand corner, you've got your grid, your ore patches, res uh, reservoirs, ore veins, and all that kind of good stuff. Uh, very simple stuff, very basic stuff. Uh, I've had a lot of questions on the Twitch streams as well, is how high can we actually build? Well, if you look up in the top left hand corner right now, you can see our height is 133. This does vary depending on your seed that you have. Have, but you always spawn on zero and zero latitude and longitude so you will always spawn if we actually go to the drop pod wherever zero zero is on your map is where you actually spawn on this uh, on here so this is where i spawned obviously these machines wasn't here back then but just like minecraft zero zero is where you will spawn but your height will vary depending on the seed you are in but regarding the height of you, what you can actually build, you can actually build up 255 blocks. So I'm going to roll a clip right here from the Twitch stream because we had a little unfortunate circumstance. Structure is out. What was that? So yeah, as you can tell, when you actually get to the height block of 255, and because our, our playable character is two blocks high, when we jump to place another block down, we actually clip through the uh, block, which then I was, you know, falling through the ground on an endless loop. And all I needed to do to fix that was just kind of move my WSD or my controller, whichever way, uh, in any direction, and it made me land uh, just on the ground. Because there is no fall damage or anything like that. That's uh, I suppose that's a tip, but... You might not know that. The next thing people asked was, how low can we actually mine? Because obviously the world is voxel based. It's an endless world. So I just drilled a hole vertically down and we got down to a height of 70 as the lowest we can actually go to. So you can actually see right now we're going through different types of rock, which is mining a little bit slower. But this can be upgraded via the research bench because if we go into here, 
we can look for something called force and what that does we've got drill mining speed as well uh, but we've also got something called mining force right here and when we get down to this layer of rock which you will see in a second which is right here as you can see they cannot be mined yet you need to research a higher mining force which is that one which i just indicated right here so when we indicate when when we research this we can mine lower but i wanted to you know whilst i was down here i was like is it, is it just that i'm on an ore that i can't mine so i pulled out some dynamite dynamite or explosives is super cool and something you should really really use so you can throw it onto the ground you can pick it back up by looking at it but if you pull out your detonator boom you don't damage yourself and as you can tell we are at a height right now of 71 and you can tell by looking up at your compass uh and obviously this is kind of like a bedrock right now but you can mine past this and go lower however i've not got to that point just yet within this playthrough but regarding explosives you can place down as many as you want like so there is no hostile creatures uh, but it has been stated on the roadmap that they would like to involve critters at some point uh, i don't know if that will be hostile or just uh world kind of things to look at kind of thing so you, as you can see you can place multiple explosives down blow it up and you clear it out and what we found out is that an explosive charge is if we put one down right here boom it it's actually a nine by nine so if we actually go here boom 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 we can see nine across there and we can see nine across there so it's a nine by nine um explosive charge and that that is a spherical number so it'll reach up into that range right there that's your explosive circle just in case you're trying to uh, mine out a mine and you want to keep things nice and kind of tidy-ish um you gotta figure out you know what your height of your explosive is going to be so regarding explosives as well if you actually throw it onto your own personal buildings or around it or it's going to be in that nine by nine spherical uh, little blast radius it will actually damage your own personal structures however when it comes to ore if you throw one on the ore or around the ore the ore does not actually get destroyed but it will destroy your own personal machines and you get left with a lot of materials explosives everywhere but the ore does not explode so if you wanted to kind of clear around it use explosives before you build your own uh, infrastructure and you can kind of see how deep it goes without checking your scanner so that's a quick little tip the next thing i want to talk to you about is the auto jump as you can tell right now i'm auto climbing these little um blocks right here so when i'm moving around you can see me automatically jumping up but just take note of how fast i'm climbing right now with the auto jump and walking up this mountain but if we go into the options menu and go into settings no sorry go into key bindings scroll down and look for um auto jump which is right here toggle uh, toggle auto climb i've got mine set to page up so if i press page up now i actually disable it which means when i try to run up here again i will not be able to auto climb i'll just literally run into a block which is good for when you are building and you don't want to accidentally climb over your you know you, you know your structures and you, yeah any blocks you place down because it can be a bit annoying when you're trying to build something here and for example i walk backwards and next thing you know, i'm bumping up onto a, an additional block however when auto climb is disabled and you try to climb up here when you jump you actually climb a lot slower because if you notice when you hold pressing spacebar there's a little bit of hang time where with auto climb there is no hang time so i'm like traversing this mountain a lot slower so if i turn it back on you can see the difference of me climbing this mountain this one is a lot of people have found this useful and didn't realize it uh, and they kind of thank me for it so hopefully this helps you too uh, and you know you're not constantly spamming spacebar uh, and buying a new keyboard in a couple of weeks the next thing with regarding to keybinds is if actually like actually go into here you cannot unfortunately uh, assign keybinds to your mouse right now a lot of people uh, have been as asking is this not a possible uh, and unfortunately it is not so this is obviously something you might have tried to explore yourself but if you haven't or you didn't know you cannot put your mouse keybinds onto this right now the devs do know about it it has been stated uh, in the discord uh, and all that kind of good stuff so 
it's not available as of yet but will be soon tm the next thing i want to show you is regarding the crafting menu and some obviously if you play factory games in the past you will probably know this but if you are new to factory games if you actually want to build something and you click left click you will build one if you right click you will build five and if you shift click you will build as many as you can regarding the resources that you have to make it so that's a quick little one that some people will know and some people might not know right the next thing i want to talk about is uh deleting so when you press f you actually pull up your demolition mode which you can delete one item at a time but if you actually press shift f you can actually pull up the bulk demolition so you click in one place it will bring then on a you want a horizontal axis so for example if i want to build delete everything that's in here and then click again it will then go to a vertical axis so everything within this red that does include going down so do keep an eye on your ui because right now it says size 923 and height 13 so as you can see it's raising so sometimes when you're mass deleting make sure you keep an eye on that number because sometimes you might delete something behind what you're wanting to delete um which is something i have requested towards the developers if we can get a lock button uh, it would be nice if we can if we can lock to a certain height so for example i go to two i press a key and it will lock uh lock to there or anything you know kind of like that so we don't accidentally you know delete something behind what we're trying to delete if that makes sense to you and then all you do is you literally just left click and everything in that area will get deleted so the next thing i want to talk about is ore and yes i've been again a lot of people saying is it um depletable or is it uh infinite well as you can see right now it is being depleted but there is something which i don't want to spoil it too much in the tech tree which allows the ore to be unlimited so yes it is uh depletable but it's also later down the tech tree you can make the ores infinite so regarding these machines right here what we're going to do is i'm just going to empty one of these well actually this one's empty but you can see the yield of this one is actually number 48 and this like varies every now and again and the only reason this is is because the distance these little um, drones have to travel from A, which is the drone port, to B, which is the ore. The closer the ore, the, uh, the less travel they have to get to the actual drone port, which means if they can get to ore quicker, the yield of this will be faster. Okay? Um, so that will affect the efficiency of and the numbers that go onto your belt lines. Um, so what I do advise is early game, put down four of these, because one belt actually holds 160 item which is your tier one mark uh, your mark one belt which is this one right here as you can see it says conveyor one items slash minute is 160 and then for tier two it's 320 um and all that kind of good stuff so make sure that you put down a minimum of four because 40 80 120 160 ish uh, is kind of a good number uh, if you wanted to you could put three down at the early game you are going to get 60 120 180 um you know so you have you have got a little bit of leeway but eventually you will need to put a fourth one down so i found out four is a good number to kind of push you through to the ore fully being depleted the next thing i want to show you is just the simple thing of upgrading belts which it is is if you actually bring up a mark ii you can see it highlighting uh, and whatever gets highlighted will get upgraded so as you can see right here all this is now a tier two but if i hold control when i've got a tier two belt on me which i actually don't have anymore but if i pull out a tier one you can see this one highlights green so i can downgrade that one to a a, a tier one but if because i'm holding control you know it's uh, replacing it but if i hold alt it will actually go above it uh, and then you don't have to you know delete it or anything so you can if you wanted to build like some vertical belts and all that kind of good stuff right and finally last but not least this is something if you want to kind of do something creative or take some screenshots and all this kind of stuff so if you actually press Control alt and u you actually bring up the camera tools it tells you in here this is a developer tool it does not represent the game's quality standards and lacks usability but if you go into here you can remove the ui you can turn day and night cycle on and off you can set your shadow distance all this kind of stuff uh character idle uh, and all this kind of good stuff show characters on and off um, but it allows you to fly around if you if you need to so you can turn your camera to fly mode and what you can see now is i am now flying around uh, and just kind of getting an overview of my place so if you wanted to do some fun little cinematic shots and all that kind of stuff 
you can use this until uh, a fully efficient mod might come out in the future. But then there's also something else. If you actually press Control, Shift, and U, uh, actually, if I turn the U, U, user interface back on, uh, sorry, Control, Alt, U, and then also if you press Control, Shift, and O on your keyboard, I'm pretty sure it brings up this menu. The only reason I say that is because once you bring up this menu once, you only need to press O on the keyboard again. You don't need to press the combination anymore. It could be Control, Shift, O, or, con or Control, Alt, O, and it brings up this debug menu. And what this allows you to do, it allows you to spawn things in if you wanted to. You can advance the time by one hour. You can change your walk speed, your sprint speed, auto research on and off, uh, and all this kind of good stuff right here. So it's just a little cool little tool, which um, was mentioned in my Twitch chat yesterday. And I find it kind of useful, especially when it comes to YouTube creation, which helps me a lot and reduces the time it takes for you know, me to kind of build the episode after, after I've already built them in the Twitch streams, kind of. So, yeah. Well, hopefully these tips helped you. And uh, thank you so much for watching. And make sure you to check out my other content right here. And remember to subscribe, like, and also leave a comment, even if it's just a bloody emoji. So thank you so much for watching. And as always, keep smiling.